Welcome to Mr. E Defense Academy presents Concealed Carry Basics, Part 2, Firearm Safety. The primary cause of firearm accidents, there are two of them, ignorance and carelessness. Ignorance is simply a lack of knowledge, uh, ignorance of the rules for safe gun handling, ignorance of the proper and safe way to operate a handgun. So a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding about the rules for safe gun handling, or lack of understanding of the proper and safe way to operate a handgun. The other cause is carelessness, which is a poor or improper attitude, which is you may know the rules, but failure to apply the rules for safe gun handling or failure to observe proper procedures for safely operating a handgun. So those are, in fact, the two primary causes for firearm accidents. The four basic gun safety rules. Uh, you will find different versions of these gun safety rules uh, from different sources. Uh, the NRA uh, uses three rules. Uh, lots of places use uh, four rules, but here's just four basic gun safety rules. Number one, treat all firearms as if they are loaded. Number two, always keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on target and you've made the decision to fire. Number three, never point a firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy. Number four, before the decision to fire, be sure of your target, your target's environment, and any other safety hazards. Following these four basic gun safety rules will be able to help you to avert those firearm accidents. So treat all firearms as if they're loaded. What does that mean? Well, if we treat it as if it's loaded, uh, really, we're not going to point it at anything that we don't want to destroy. We're going to be careful about where we point the firearm because we treat it as if it's loaded. It could go off at any time. Uh, if you, you know, if you depress the trigger, uh, the firearm could go off. And so by treating it as if it's loaded, you always treat it uh, responsibly. Uh, if someone hands you a firearm, you always check to make sure that it's unloaded, but you still treat it as if it's loaded. Uh, we keep that muzzle pointed in a safe direction. The muzzle is the front end of the of the gun, the part where the bullet comes out of. And so we always, always treat it if it's loaded means to keep that muzzle pointed in a safe direction. And the second one, always keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on target and you've made the decision to fire. So you shouldn't be waving a gun around with your finger on the trigger. The finger goes on the trigger only when you're ready to fire. And when you are ready to fire, you make sure of your target, your target's environment, and any other safety hazards. And again, follow these four basic gun safety rules at all times. Other gun safety or range safety rules, and each range will have its own set of safety rules, so you want to be aware of what their safety rules are. But here's some general guidelines. Know your target and what is beyond. Know how to use the firearm safely. Be sure the firearm is safe to operate. Use only the correct ammunition for your firearm. Wear eye and ear protection. Never use alcohol or drugs before or while shooting. Store all firearms so they are not accessible to unauthorized persons, such as children, restricted persons, and so on. Never handle a handgun in an emotional state, such as anger or depression. Keep firearm unloaded until you're ready to use. Other safety considerations. Be a knowledgeable gun handler and user. Before starting to clean a gun, be certain it's not loaded. Double and triple check. Cleaning a gun also provides an opportunity to check the proper function of the gun. Always be sure the gun barrel is free from obstructions. When handing a pistol to another person, always be sure the muzzle is pointed in a safe direction, your finger is off the trigger, the action is open, magazine has been removed, ball, and all cham chambers are empty. Carry only one type of ammunition to avoid mixing different types. If in possession of an old or antique firearm or a gun that is military souvenir, be sure that it is unloaded. Never fire at surfaces that can cause a bullet to ricochet, such as water or hard, flat objects. If a cartridge fails to fire when the trigger is pulled, keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Don't attempt to open the action to remove the cartridge for at least 30 seconds. Also, if anything unusual is noticed when a shot is fired, such as a difference in recoil or noise, immediately do the following. Stop firing immediately. Keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Keep your finger off the trigger. Unload the gun and be sure to check that the chamber is empty, and then visually inspect the barrel for obstructions. Following those safety considerations can, can really go a long way towards making shooting a fun and enjoyable experience and keeping everyone safe. Firearm safety at the home. Permit holders and everyone who owns a firearm 
are responsible for teaching their children and other occupants in their home about firearm safety. The permit holder should be a, a positive role model for children. Children should be taught the difference between television, toys, and real life. Children should be taught what to do if they come across a firearm without an adult present. Stop, don't touch, leave the area, and tell a responsible adult. Also, be sure to store guns and ammunition so they are not accessible to unauthorized persons. Store guns and ammunition separately. Store them in a cool, dry place. Protecting your family involves more than just keeping them safe from an accident or from an attack. In Utah, firearm deaths from 2010 to 2014, the vast majority were suicide deaths. Time and distance may save a life. So if you put time and distance between a suicidal person and a gun, it may save their life. Uh, people ask, won't they just substitute another method? Some may, but nearly anything else is less likely to kill. Others may delay their attempt. Either way, the odds of survival go up for three reasons. One, suicidal crises are often brief. Two, the deadlines, excuse me, the deadliness of an attempt depends in part on the method used. And three, 90% of those who attempt suicide and survive do not go on to kill themselves, even those who make very serious attempts. People admitted to a hospital after an attempt were asked how long they'd been thinking about suicide before the attempt. 48% said 10 minutes or less. Who's at risk of suicide? People who struggle with depression, substance abuse, or other mental health problems, especially if they're also facing a painful crisis like a relationship breakup, arrest, trouble at work, financial crisis, problems that make you feel hopeless and trapped. Teens at home? Teens who die by suicide may show few or no warning, excuse me, warning signs. A wise precaution is to store guns locked if you have children at home, especially if you have teenagers. Storage options. If a household member is at risk of suicide, you could store guns away from the home until they've recovered, such as with a relative you trust, self-storage unit, or you can change the locks, make sure that they can't find the keys or the combination. Another option is to don't keep ammunition at home until they've recovered. Hiding guns isn't recommended. Family members often know one another's hiding places. If it's a friend that's at, that's at risk, offer to hold on to their guns. Be sure to check with your local jurisdiction to make sure that that is allowed. In Utah, it is allowed uh, allowable under Utah law. What if you're the one at risk? If you feel yourself spiraling down, take precautions before things get to a crisis point. Any strategy that builds some time between you and a gun in a suicidal crisis will keep you safer. Store your guns off-site temporarily or ask someone you trust to hold on to the keys or store keys somewhere they're not available in a crisis like in a bank safety deposit box or disassemble guns. These are temporary measures until you've recovered. Under Utah's safe harbor law, a gun owner or spouse can store their firearms free of charge with law enforcement if they believe someone at home is in danger to selves or others. Get help. Uh, within Utah, there's the Utah Statewide Crisis Line. Here's the National Suicide Crisis Line, 1-800-273-TALK. In an emergency, call 911 and ask for a crisis intervention team officer. And to learn more about suicide prevention, you can visit utahsuicideprevention.org. Gun-owning families can help to bring down the number of firearm suicides, and we can do it without government mandates, without legislation, without red flag laws. Together, we can protect our family, our friends, and our freedom. So following those safety guidelines can help us to enjoy our shooting sports, uh, practice at the range, uh, skill building, and all of those things involved with firearms in a safe and healthy manner.